Good morning, South Harbor Creek. Uh, this is Gordon Conklin uh, filling in for Pastor Keith this morning. Uh, Pastor's getting another well-deserved uh, vacation day, and we are just truly blessed to have him as our leader. Um, for those who don't know me, I've been at South Harbor Creek four or five years now. Um, I've been in Florida the last couple winters, and obviously with the COVID uh, outbreak, I haven't been at church. Um, so today I'd like to talk to you about my favorite person in the Bible. And that's the Apostle Peter. And Peter is so special to me because I often see Peter as mimicking or having that same faith journey that I do. And the, 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 what I'm going to call this topic today is, which Peter are you? And I just want to kind of take you through some of the lessons we can learn from Peter on a faith journey. I mean, his faith journey is one of... Uh, triumph, failure, and triumph again, and uh, it should be an inspiration to all of us. So let's talk. Let's start talking a little about who who was Peter. You know, I think uh, you know some of us know this. Most of us probably do. But you know, P Peter's name originally was Simon, and he was a fisherman from Galilee. And uh, Jesus changed his name to Peter, which uh, is the Rock. So even even those early days, Jesus knew what Peter was going to mean to the church. Um, when he went to, after he went to heaven. That's pretty incredible. And Peter was, uh, like most of us, uh, you know, he was a sinful man. And, you know, the first thing that happens in Peter's faith journey, similar to ours, is we're called. And uh, in, chap in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, uh, let me read that with you. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesit, Genesart, the people were crowded around him and listened to the word of God. He saw the water's edge, two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the net. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Can you imagine that? When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away, away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. <clears throat> For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish it had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for, the, for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Um, so, you know, this is the first thing we see. Um, Peter's called, and he answers that call. You know, and I, I often challenge myself, you know, do I answer that, that call with the intensity um, of Peter in this, in this circumstance? You know, that he hears the call and he goes. And, you know, I often challenge myself to, to find ways that, um, you know, I can answer that call um, and, and meet those needs. So that's the first thing we see with Peter. You know, and the second uh, thing I want to talk about is Peter walking on water. I think we all know the story there. Um, so let me flip over to, to Matthew and just read from that uh, quick section for that. And I apologize about mispronouncing that lake's name earlier. Um, not a strength of mine. Um, so, um, Jesus walking on the water. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. He began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat whispered to him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So what we see here, you know, is Peter makes that, that uh, step of faith that we often do. You know, we... Make those first couple steps, and then the wind blows against us. You know, that, that wind, whatever that wind is, you know, that wind is many different things for people. 
There's always something blowing against your faith. And the question is, do you keep your eyes on Jesus or do you become uh, fearful? You know, like Pastor Keith says, uh, fear can't live live where there is faith. So, you know, do we, when we feel that fear, do we replace it with our faith? You know, or are we like Peter in this case? You know, and, and do we fall when, when that happens? Um, so, you know, another interesting lesson from Peter. Um, I'd like to go on to, um, you know, what the first time that Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. And, and that's recounted for us in Matthew chapter 16, um, uh, verse 13 through 20. When Jesus came to the region of uh, Sarasri, Philippia, he asked his disciples, what do be, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Um, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you, you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed, loosed, it, loosed, in, loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. So right here we see that you know Peter recognizes that Jesus is the Messiah, um, and we do that too. You know, there, there's there are points in our faith journey somewhere along the way that we recognize Christ as the Messiah, um, and that's the it's the foundation of our faith, right? And what is really telling in that faith journey is that you know. We, Peter has gotten to that point that he recognizes Jesus. But once again, we see later in Matthew that when Peter feels fear when Jesus is taken, he denies him. You know, once again, his faith retreats where the fear comes in. Um, so just real quick, uh, going through... Uh, I'm sorry, Luke. We're going to go to Luke. Luke chapter 22. Um, when Jesus is taken. Uh, after Jesus is taken, you know, obviously Peter is in the, in the garden. You know, we know that Peter attacks the guard. But we're not going to actually get into that today. But, um, but, you know, Peter denies Jesus. You know, earlier we just read how he recognized to Jesus' face and said, You're the Messiah. I recognize that. I believe that. Um, but then when fear creeps in, he turns away. And real quick, we'll go through Luke 22, 54 to 62, which really covers um, Peter's denial. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered the words of the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, he will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. So here, you know, we, we just talked a, a lot about this, you know, is that Peter allowed that fear to creep in and he let his faith go. You know, and do we do we do that? I, I have, you know, I, I've allowed my fear to, to wane, you know, and I, I think sometimes uh, the story of Peter is always one we need to come back to because there, there's times that, you know, a lot of us feel very strong in our faith, and there's some times we, we kind of fall away and have to re-energize and, and re rejuvenate our, our faith and our beliefs. Um, so let's go on and we'll do uh, one more section, and that is uh, in John chapter 21. Um, at, this is after the crucifixion and the resurrection. Peter's reinstated by Jesus. 
Um, so let me read that real quick, will you? When they, they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And, you know, you know we know that Peter, not too long ago, has denied even knowing who Jesus was. Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. <clears throat> Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you to where you do not want to go. So, in this full circle, that is Peter. You know, we see Peter <clears throat> reinstated with Christ. <clears throat> and as we know, Peter goes on um, to start the church. He becomes the rock, the foundation. Um, and he dies, you know, uh, you know interpretations of, of the, the verse I just read is Peter gets crucified. You know, that's part of the his story is that he is crucified um, for his faith. So, you know, we see that complete circle. So, you know, uh, my challenge to you today is to think about where you're at in your faith journey. And go back and read about Peter. You know, here are the a man that walked with Christ struggled this much. You know, and so it's okay for us to have our moments that we struggle, but we're called to turn back to our faith, similar to, to what Peter did. And uh, I, I encourage you to open your Bible, and uh, I pray you have a, a blessed weekend. And let me uh, close this in, in a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that uh, you will be there with all of us and, and guide us on our, our faith journey, Lord, that you strengthen us when we're weak. You stretch out and reach out for us when we... Uh, turn away, Lord, and that uh, you always welcome us back into your into your fold. And Lord, we, we pray that this day will be the best day of the rest of our lives. Amen.